Hey, it's Tim here. And if you've been living under a rock, you might have missed the fact that this week is the Tableau conference. And what I've done is in this video, I've basically done a very quick overview of how the virtual platform works. Now, because it's virtual this year, unlike usual conference, there's actually quite a few things you need to be aware of. And there are also some really great features that if you're new to conference and haven't had an opportunity to go to conference before, you wanna make sure you don't miss out. So definitely get involved. Some of these things can only really be done whilst conference is happening. So uh, definitely make sure you get involved. I've got chapter markers in the description below and also in the YouTube timeline. So definitely check those out so you can skip ahead if you're bored or if you wanna watch another section again. But otherwise, uh, buckle up, get involved. This is a long video, I apologize, but there's just so much to cover. All right, let's get stuck in. So the first thing you want to do is head to the TC conference-ish website. So to do that, you just need to go to your uh, little browser bar and type in tc20.tableau.com, hit enter, and that brings you to this landing page. Once here, you'll see this landing page, and this landing page is a very, very simple page, but there's a couple of things you need to do in order to get access to the full TC Conference-ish website. The first thing you're going to need is a Tableau login. Now, a Tableau login is typically what you'd use to log into the Tableau website. If you don't have one of these, you can create one of these. Just go ahead to the register now option, and it will tell you the instructions here to create your Tableau account. Once you have your Tableau account, you can then log in with that account. So you simply log in with that account. In my case, I've actually got the authentication already set up here. But if you haven't, you'll see this page. All you need to do is go ahead and type in your email. You probably want to hit the Remember Me option to make sure you sign in, then sign in. Once you can see this page, you're basically ready to go back and log in to the Tableau Conference-ish website. So let's go back to this first tab. And now if I refresh this page and sign in, you'll see that it'll pick up my login and now I get full access to the Tableau Conference 2020 website. Now you're here, you can see there's quite a lot more information. So I'm just gonna walk you through this in sections. First off, this landing page. So this is essentially where they showcase all the things that are going on right now. So you have your broadcast channels here. If I scroll a bit further down, they've got the keynote session here. They've got some other sections as well here. So they're just basically calling out some of the key activities uh, throughout the conference. And of course, it's a virtual conference. So some of this is typically done in person, but they've made it digital and virtual. Um, so it's gonna be really exciting experience to see how they've done it for the first time. So let's start right from the top. Let's look at the broadcast channels. Essentially, there are four channels available throughout conference and each channel broadcasts content based on the time zone that you're in. So there's essentially three key time zones that you need to be aware of. When you register for the conference, you'll choose a time zone. So for me, I'm in British Standard Time. So everything and the times I see here will be based on my current time zone. You can see here that the broadcast region is set to Europe. The other thing you'll notice is that this schedule actually has two formats. So when I hover over these, I can actually see what the sessions are. These yellow ones are the keynote. So this is essentially events that are scheduled for everyone. If I go over here to the top right hand side and just select details, I actually get the same view, but in more detail. So now I can actually see the content of each of these. And if I click on any one of these, it takes me through to the full page where I get more information. This isn't as useful for the keynotes because the keynotes are the keynotes. Everyone knows what those are but it's better for the sessions that have been specifically planned because it gives you more context as to what you're going to watch. Now, the other thing to notice is the color coding. The color coding is really important because it tells you where the content is coming from and essentially what theme that content follows. So the yellow theme here is data for all, essentially events for everyone. The red is the Tableau community track. So these are actually content uh, sections prepared by members from the Tableau community. If you go here to this uh, slightly, I, I don't, I never know what these colors are, but if you go here to this color, this is the partner track. So you, if you ever see anything in this color, it's one of Tableau's partners spending a little bit of time talking about how they help customers with their product. And then lastly here, what's new in Tableau? This is obviously the most interesting track because this is where you go to see some of the new features coming up in future releases of Tableau. Now, of course, this is just day one, October the 7th. So if I go across to the second day, you'll see that the color coding gets a little bit more interesting. And now we start to see how this schedule really works. Now, if you see a piece of content and you'd like to watch it, if you just hover over it, you obviously have the ability to add it to your watch list. Now, I found this a little bit temperamental, but if you click on it, this tooltip actually remains and then you're able to hit add to my watch list. That adds it to your watch list, which I'll show you a little later on. Now you can go around, essentially click through this content, add various bits of contents that you're interested in watching. And once you've done all that, you'll essentially have an agenda built out for you. 
If you want to, you can always, of course, go in and click on the title to see more information. And when you actually go into this, you get a little bit more information about the event itself. Obviously, you can add it to your watch list as we have done already but you can also click on the supporting materials. So supporting materials tends to be things like PDFs. And so if I just download this to my desktop and we go ahead and show that in my finder window, I'll just bring it into view here so you can see. Let me just unpackage it off screen here and then bring in the PDF onto screen. You'll see here that this is essentially the contents that's been provided for the session. So each and every session will have some predefined content that you're obviously going to have access to so you don't have to worry about taking notes this should be made available to you the last thing you can do of course is save it to your calendar a lot of people are going to be watching this conference whilst that works so of course this is a great way of making sure that that session you want to watch doesn't clash with the meeting that you have now the other thing is that this conference is virtual so i i highly assume here i hope this is the case that most of the content will actually be available after the conference so once the conference is over i don't see any reason why you can't come back to this page and just watch these on demand so essentially that should be something that's made available it's actually been the case in past conferences that sessions like this are made available on YouTube and in this case they might just remain available here on this website I'm sure Tableau probably want to do a bit of lead generation through this given as we all didn't go to conference in person so this is essentially how each and every session works you'll see the theme the content and also the ability to add it to your calendar and build your own watch list now if I just go back to the previous page where I was browsing through the broadcast channel you can now assume that I've basically selected all my sessions how do I view all the sessions that have added to my watch list if you go up to the top and you go click on what to watch, you'll see my watch list. And if you click on that, you'll see everything that you've added to your watch list. Now, the other thing to notice is what's on now will show you what's actually going on right now um, in various channels. So if you've got a watch list here and there's nothing really interesting, you can just see what's going on right now that you can join into. So this is a great way of just keeping this tab open, keep this bookmarked. You can just check in if you have an hour, some background listening that you can possibly do. Maybe you've got two screens, you want to watch two bits of content. I personally can't do that, but I know some people who can. Um, this is a great way of staying in tune with the conference and making sure that you get the most of it. Now, if I go back to the homepage and we just look at the sessions, if I scroll further down, you'll see another section that shows you what's on now. OK, so this is another great way of making sure you don't miss out on anything. And it's, again, very similar to the homepage. It's actually slightly confusing. If I go to the homepage, you've got the broadcast channel. But if I go to now showing, you've got the same page, but with information at the bottom. So just bear in mind that those two are slightly different. This homepage icon is actually its own relevant page, and it's worth being aware of that. Now, the keynote is obviously led by the CEO, Adam Solipsky, but there's also a bunch of other content. So how do you find out what this content is? Well, the best way to do this isn't actually to just browse this page. It's actually just to be curious and browse every single section of the menu because there's lots of really good content that's probably going to be harder to find because you won't just walk past it as you would in conference. So let's find out how to do that. So we've looked at how to add content to your watch list. We've looked at how to browse uh, what's going on. There's this great episode guide which allows you to search content based on your specific region. So you can essentially add the right time slot to your meeting. And if you just notice here, there's 313 bits of content but in each region it's 98 bits of content so essentially the same content is being played multiple times add to that the data for all section which is basically things like the keynote and so on and so forth and you basically have all the content that we have available to you you can also do things like filter it by your role filter it by category this is normally useful for sectors and then you've also got topics maybe you're only at conference or maybe you only want to find out more about one specific topic this is a great way to sort of dig into that so this is a really nice way of filtering this content and finding the things you need to know okay so i've shown you how to browse the episode guide how to add things to your watch list what else is there to do at conference well let's get involved so if i go to connect this is basically where i think you should spend a lot of your time tableau conference is a great opportunity to collect to lots of members of the community so at the very top if you haven't seen these photos going around twitter and social media grab your own essentially snap a photo upload it and you'll get a really nice image here uh, ready to share for the conference the second thing here is brain data and actually this is the most useful aspect of the conference in my opinion brain data are essentially sessions where you get to meet another person from conference and essentially the idea is that people who have knowledge to share 
put topics here on the Brain Dates platform, and then people who want to know about that topic can reach out to them and talk to them about that topic. So I myself have a Brain Dates profile. If I click launch Brain Dates here, you'll see that it'll ask me to get started. So if I go ahead and get started, um, it will ask you to basically make sure that you are all registered and ready to go. Once you've done that, you go ahead and click I confirm and click next and then you'll get your own profile. Now the thing here is I'm actually logged into one of my other profiles here so you won't see the session that I'm offering but I'll show you how to find sessions in general. You can each just search by topic. So let's say I'm interested in recording videos at a conference a bit like I do. So if I just hit video, you'll see that actually quite a few people have hit that topic. So You'll see here, this is my session. So if I click on that session, you can actually see recording high quality video guides for users. And if you like that, you can obviously heart this. And then you can also invite to a virtual brain date. So if I go here and click invite, now I have to choose the time zones that I'm available in. And the thing is, this will integrate with the user's calendar if they've linked it to show you when they'll be available. So I highly recommend you don't just choose one slot. I highly recommend you choose multiple slots so you make sure you have the best opportunity to meet people in different time zones. And just think about that. Maybe do something morning, lunchtime and afternoon uh, just to give the person who's running the brain date a bit of flexibility to sort of um, make that work. Once you've added a brain date to your session, you can go ahead, let's say I can propose a few times. I'm proposing these to myself, so if I just hit continue and stand, this will now fire off that. And you can also introduce yourself. Um, you can say, I'm Tim. Hi Tim, so I'm actually sending this brain date to myself. So if I hit that send in invitation, then it awaits my response. So obviously I can then get this in my profile and then I can confirm it. And once it's confirmed, you'll see it available here. So don't just assume that once you've sent that brain date off, that the session's gonna go ahead. It needs to be confirmed. And then essentially, I think the Brain Dates platform will let you sort of connect via some sort of virtual um, setup. So it's a really, really good way of meeting new people and finding out new topics. There's a whole range of uh, topics you can find out here in the market space. So go ahead and find out more about those things and just basically search to your heart's content. If you wanna find out about Tableau Server, I'm sure there's going to be uh, a couple of Brain Dates about that. So ask me anything um, in Thai. Uh, lots of people from different parts of the world, obviously willing to share information and knowledge. So get involved. The group sessions are probably the best ones because um, when you're one-on-one, -on -one, you tend to not have as many people to bounce ideas, ideas off. And actually the conversation can become very linear. Whereas in you know, as Whereas if you're in a group, it's slightly easier to actually have ideas and the discussion can go in places that maybe two people wouldn't have gone down, but maybe a group would. And it actually means it's a, it's a sort of a better richness of conversation and less awkward moments if there's not much conversation to talk about. So you can see here, my colleague Jonathan has set up a brain date on Tableau server on AWS. And uh, it's a great way of sort of going in and finding out about that. Obviously this session is full, so unfortunately, um, you can't get into those. And actually, you might find a lot of the sessions you want to do are full. So just maybe connect with those people on Twitter and LinkedIn and just see if they've already created content about that because the likelihood is, is that they have. So um, just go out and find out more about that and see, see what you find um, out in the conference. Okay, heading back to the Tableau website, once you're here, you'll obviously see this Tableau Partner Solutions page. Now, Tableau Partners are essentially um, partners of Tableau who help clients deliver sort of specific solutions. So they're not Tableau, they are partners of Tableau, and each of them has a, a certain speciality. So if you click on this, learn more about our Tableau Partners, you actually get to find out who those partners are. Some of them are technology partners, some of them are consulting partners, some of them are resellers who sell Tableau on behalf of Tableau. But there's a whole range of content here that you can find out about. You can also think of some of these as sponsors essentially so it's a really good way of understanding sort of um, what they have to offer but as well as being sponsors some of them are actually partners so you tend to find partners sponsor the conference because obviously it's a it's sort of a mutual benefit to both to both partners so that's a great way of finding out more about those um, individuals if I keep going down, there's Tableau Doctor Sessions. Now, Tableau Doctor Sessions are really, really good. If I go ahead here and book an appointment, you kind of get more detail. So essentially, if you've got a problem, a really specific problem, and you'd actually like someone at Tableau to look at it, or even a Tableau Zen Master to look at it, 
they have these sessions and these sessions are really good because sometimes you have a problem and it could just be that you're thinking about it the wrong way and you know these sessions are timed to really let you dig into that topic in, in a sort of a deep manner and they typically tend to pair you up with someone who knows about that topic so go ahead book an appointment and once you've booked an appointment you can then go ahead and and sort of be specific you can you can you can pick one of these sort of topic areas and uh, maybe it's survey analysis so you know they've sort of bucketed this in a really really nice way you can choose a time slot then the expert and then once you've done that you've scheduled your meeting and pretty much you're good to go so there's a little bit of control here probably more than what you'd have had at conference because at conference it's like 20 30 000 people <laughs> you don't get as much choice there you get to see who's available at that moment in time but here there's obviously a little bit more sort of um, uh, customization as to how you sort of tailor your session so that's a really great place to go and find out more the last thing is obviously the community. Um, if you're not part of the Tableau forums, go ahead and get involved. If you've never been to the Tableau store, if you're a really big part of the data community and you don't have swag, I don't know what's gone wrong there. So go to the shop and grab some uh, some merch if you haven't done so, or go to the next Tableau conference. I'm sure next year we'll hopefully be back and swinging in person and Tableau merch is always uh, sort of fun to have uh, and get involved with. So that's pretty much it for the connect uh, section of this, of this conference. Now there's the gallery. Now the gallery is really cool. If you go to this gallery, it basically shows all the profiles. The people who've taken those profile photos it's like a, a nice way of meeting people at conference and just seeing who they are um, you can't really do anything with these profiles so you can't click on them but I think it's a nice way of sort of showcasing the diversity of the community the range of places that people are coming from and it's a nice way of just sort of uh, meeting people uh, in the community but this is basically a, sort of a nice tab to have up on you know full screen somewhere and just see you know who, who's coming to conference what do they look like who are the people and you get to connect with the personalities a little bit more Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is the Tableau Public Viz Gallery. Now, I think this is personally a, a very hidden part of the website. If you head to the Tableau homepage here, to the conference homepage, just hit that icon there. Then scroll down to the bottom. On the right-hand side, you'll see this Tableau Public Viz Gallery. Go ahead and hit Visit, and that will take you to the gallery. Now, you can go full screen, but there's actually a bug where if I go full screen, I can't show you some of the visits. But go ahead and hit Enter and you'll get a little tutorial on how the website works. You can also hear some music in the background to make it more like a gallery. It's a really nice virtual space. So let me just turn my volume down here so that we can actually uh, browse the website without getting some feedback there. Now, if I turn to the right here, you can see you get the rest of the venue and it's really, really cool. It's really nicely laid out. There's actually a little bit of a map here at the top. So you've got the first room, which is the Iron Viz room, then the Gallery C and then Gallery D. So we're currently in Gallery A. There's a few visitors here already, so be sure to check out those behind you before you move in. Um, they're really, really nicely done, and they're definitely things you should check out. So as I scroll around the room, you can just see it's a really amazing sort of uh, atmosphere. I actually wish the whole conference was like this. This would be a really great way of seeing uh, stores from sponsors and so on and so forth. But it's nice that they've kept this bit virtual and sort of made this uh, into a virtual reality sort of space. I also wish you had some um, uh, support for sort of Google headset so that you can actually look at this in, in sort of virtual space and walk around it yourself. The cool thing you can do though is you can interact with these visas. So if I stop here and look at the Iron Viz wall here, these three visas are the uh, winners from the Iron Viz feeder. So they'll actually be going head to head on Tuesday. I think Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, definitely make sure you look at the schedule to make sure I've got that right. But if I hit on Alex's here, Karuna here, um, this is a really, really nice viz. Um, I saw this uh, as a judge during the feeder sessions and I thought it was one of the most amazing visits I've come across, really nicely done. But all of these visits, in fact, if I look at the next one by Simon Beaumont, this is a really cool viz again. It's amazing how Simplicity nearly always wins these feeder sessions. You know, they didn't go too hard on a particular thing. They kept focus on a story and really focus on what they were showing and they're using really simple charts in a really effective way and that's some of the best tips I can give you to getting through to the Iron Viz feeder. Obviously if you click on the Iron Viz logo it comes up with a schedule and a time. So you can only vote in the Iron Viz by the way if you're watching in the time zone that it's actually being hosted in which is the American time zone. So if you want to watch live and vote live make sure you watch in that time zone otherwise in all other time zones you'll be watching sort of a replay of the thing and you can't vote. If I go to the rest of the room let's go to the red room. We can see more visas here as well. So I, I, I'm always amazed how some of these are built in Tableau. Like if I just look at this one here, meteorites are right in front of me. Um, 
this is incredible. This is like just just the creativity to think of this and then make it in Tableau is amazing. And I always look at these things and go, how on earth has that been done in Tableau? And sometimes it's really simple. It's just some really creative thought that's gone into it. And in other cases, I'm just bewildered. I just don't understand what's going on. And so I take a mental note to go away and learn what's in the viz and figure out how to introduce this into my own work. If all you did all year was figure out how each and every one of these was built, you'd learn so much about Tableau. So if you want to use that as a way of learning Tableau, then go ahead and do that. But that's pretty much it for the Tableau Viz Gallery. I highly encourage that you check it out. You go have a visit. And of course, you go to Tableau Public where all these vizs are hosted 24-7 um, and you can download some of them and play with them and sort of enjoy them to your heart's content. Okay, let's head back to the Tableau Conference webpage and look at the next feature. If you've got any questions about this website, obviously you've got an FAQ here. If I just click on that again, you'll see that this is a great page to have your questions answered, learn more about what's going on. And they have little videos about each of these things. So you can actually find out how these things work. They're really, really great ways of finding out how everything works. Uh, I'll just, you can see the videos here are really, really nicely done. Uh, and they just explain the concept a bit for people who haven't had the opportunity to come to conference before. Uh, there's a whole range of questions there. So this is definitely a great place to start with questions, but of course you can just ask people in the community and they're more than willing to help. Last but not least, post-conference, there's always a load of content that's available. So be sure to check out some of these uh, hubs and resources that Tableau have always had available. So feedback, ideas, um, talking to devs, the Tableau blueprint, customer stories, and, and a whole range of other resources, including training content. If I just open this in a new tab, you'll see here that uh, they've always had these articles, blogs, uh, galleries, and white papers that go into certain topics in extreme detail. So if you're maybe looking to get um, deeper into certain aspects, then by all means, jump into that and get involved. So that's pretty much it. That's a very quick tour. I tried to keep this video short um, to just give you an overview of how the website work, how to make the most of it, and basically engage with other people and um, through the platform. So thanks for watching. Um, if you know someone who'd find this video useful, share it with them. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. Otherwise, I hope to catch you at conference. Hope to catch you at a brain date if you're interested in that. Find my session, reach out to me. Um, I'm gonna be setting up a Discord channel soon. So if you don't get an opportunity to talk to me at conference, well, don't worry. We will be setting up a Discord for this channel at some point very, very soon. Be sure to look out in the comments because I won't necessarily announce it straight away. Probably gonna want a bit of an alpha and a beta setup initially, um, but get involved and I'll find you in the community a little later on. Okay, thanks for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, let me know in the comments and we'll try and improve the quality of the content we're making. We'll catch you in the next one.